engineer map. Uh, you're a civil engineer specializing in GIS. And uh, I, I know you from previous experience. So uh, with that, you uh, take it away. Thank you, Nick. Uh, just want to do a sound check here. Everybody can hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you great. Okay, okay perfect. Thank you, Nick, for moderating. And thank you, everyone, Steve uh, Steinberg, and everyone's hard work for organizing this year's GIS Day. It's, it's cool to see that it's grown into two days. Um, and I know this year is especially um, more difficult because of the virtual aspect, um, but it's great to see everyone and some fam familiar names here. So um, for everyone that doesn't know me, um, hello, uh, my name is Carrie Wiley and I'm, I'm now the Enterprise Account Executive for NearMap. So I'm just transitioning into this role from a technical sales engineer. And um, I'm now in the public sector uh, for the Western region. Uh, I'm, so I'm grateful for the opportunity to participate in this year's LA County uh, GIS Day now as a vendor. Uh, as some of you know, I spent some time working for LA County, uh, so it's a geography I know very well, and uh, it's great to reconnect with the geospatial community out on the West Coast. Um, so I'm excited today to give you a little virtual tour of what we do at NearMap and provide insight on how we can help improve efficiency and uh, your day-to-day -day workflows, uh, whether that be in planning, uh, the assessors, beaches and harbors, or for that matter, any of the cities, agencies, and even businesses within LA County and beyond. Um, so I'm gonna take a moment here and I'm gonna switch screens out of a PowerPoint and I'm gonna pull up uh, our map browser interface. Uh, so this location is special to LA County GIS Day. I, I know in the past, this was the location of uh, our live events. And I know this because I helped, um, I helped organize there for a few years. Um, and so this year, it's, we're virtually everywhere. I'm actually dialing in from New York City, which is pretty cool. And I know a lot of you are likely at home. So um, how great is it that GIS is bringing us all together? Um, so I wanted to, to pull up Olive Court here in Grand Park. Uh, and what's really uh, nice about this is we uh, just flew LA last month. So we have up-to-date imagery from October. So pretty recent imagery um, and it's clear um, and I'll get into the details of all of that. But I wanna start off um, for those of you who don't know who or what NearMap is or what we do. Uh, we are an aerial imagery provider. Um, we are a global company uh, started in 2008 in Sydney, Australia, and we came to the US in 2014. And so uh, we are a little bit different than the traditional providers in that we, uh, we proactively fly the major metro areas um, where the population um, is, is uh, the most. Um, so we're capturing over 430 metro areas in the US. Uh, we have expanded into Canada and New Zealand and we have been capturing in uh, Australia since 2008. So we are, um, we're able to do that because of our, uh, our proprietary camera systems. Uh, we have a proprietary processing pipeline, um, which enables us to uh, turn the imagery around very quickly, as you can see here, um, October, mid-October mid we flew, and this was, this was published to Map Browser here a few weeks just, just after capture. Um, so what we focus on are the four Cs. We focus on current, clear, consistent, and uh, change detection. So since we do have an archive of imagery dating back to 2014, um, which um, everyone gets access to when you become a customer. Um, and so that allows for change detection and time lapses of construction sites. And it's, it's just um, provides a lot of insight to the data that we, that we collect. Um, so as I mentioned, frequency, we are capturing up to three times per year in the major metro areas. Um, and that's three ortho captures and one oblique capture. We have an HC1 camera system. That's our first generation system. And then we have since released an HC2 camera system that allows us to collect oblique imagery anywhere from 15 to 45 degree um, angle. And then we stitch those together into a panorama product, which I will show you here. So this is our um, seamless mosaic. Um, it is available in all four orientations, um, but provides a kind of a bird's eye, bird's eye view here of um, various sites. Um, so what's great about NearMap is that because we're proactively flying our footprint every year, we're able to distribute those costs um, over um, a, a lot of customers and verticals. And so that lowers the cost for aerial imagery for um, uh, local government, um, cities, uh, state agencies, businesses. So that's a, it's a really great um, 
feature that we that we're able to provide because we do provide this as a subscription model. So we provide our imagery imagery through the cloud. Um, so it's very easy to access. Um, you're, you're seeing our map browser interface here. So you would get a login. Um, you can access all the historical archive for Panorama. We're going back to 2017. Um, but then we also offer um, all of this data through the cloud. Um, and that's going to allow you to integrate with um, the various technology partners that we have. And that includes Esri, uh, Geocortex, Autodesk, Bentley, CityWorks, um, and more. So our inter integrations make it um, a very viable product to bring into your third-party applications for visualization and um, analysis and um, just um, access in general. Um, so imagery is the foundation and provides a visual understanding of the real world. Um, so as you can see here, you have an up-to-date shot of, uh, of Grand Park, which would be a great base layer for planning out the booths for GIS day or performing measurements or just doing a vis visual inspection on the condition of the pavement. Or um, perhaps you want to measure um, the heights of certain assets like light poles or, or traffic or signs or anything um, to that effect. Uh, and so since NearMap is up to date, it's a better source of truth, um, which is critical for decision making, planning, design, and a, a multitude of other use cases. Um, so what I want to do next, I want to jump into our various products that we offer because it's not just this top down vertical imagery that you see here and um, sometimes referred to as orbital imagery. We also have that panorama product. Um, we also have the obliques. So what I want to do is I want to drop a pin here and what you'll see over here on the right hand panel is a timestamp from when that image was collected. And what I want to do next, I want to switch over to the oblique view, and this is going to pull up one of our source images. And so we allow um, for the imagery and uh, the oblique mode to be to be measured. So you can do heights, you can do area measurements, and that's going to be accurate to within six six inches per image. Um, so the obliques, um, not only do we offer them in the uh, various uh, cardinal directions, but we also offer um, several of those source images so that if some of the building is cut off by one of the tiles, you're gonna get access to other, um, other tiles um, that might provide a better view of that location. This is especially helpful when you're in areas with tall buildings. Um, since we collect our obliques at 15 to 45 degrees, you can sometimes get a better, a better angle in there. Um, and so what's exciting about our, um, our processing pipeline and, and what we offer is that we take all of these oblique images and we stitch it all together into um, a 3D content stack. And that includes our 3D textured mesh. And what I'll do is I will switch over to 3D. And I apologize, it's gonna take a second to load because we are on Zoom. But it's gonna pull up our 3D textured mesh in a cesium format. Let me zoom out here. And so all of this 3D data is available for viewing within Map Browser. You can perform measurements, you can do heights, you can do area. And then what we also provide is the ability to export um, on, on demand. So we allow you to come in here, uh, draw an area of interest around a block or an area up to, I, I believe it's 20 square miles. And then you can export those content types. Looks like it's having a little bit of trouble um, rendering with the internet connection and I'm also on video, so I apologize for that, but it does fill in. Um, but when you export these formats here, um, you define the, the vintage that you want. Um, we have September 2019 is the most um, recent we have available. We are processing that um, October 2020 vintage now. We allow you to select the various um, spatial reference systems. So that's gonna save you a step in your design application, you're not going to have to do that transformation or reprojection. And then we allow you to export all these different content types from the SLPK, which can be used in ArcGIS Pro, OBJ and FBX in um, the Autodesk products. And then we have a, a point cloud available as well that's going to be at a density of 44 points per square meter. meter. Um, we have a digital surface model, and that's going to be six inch uh, resolution. We also have a digital elevation model, um, and that's going to be added to the self-export um, um, here very soon. Uh, so you can actually go in here and grab all these content types at once and bring those into your third-party application. So I have just a few minutes left. 
Um, I wanted to jump over to some, some cool locations I picked out in LA County, just to show you um, the impact of our imagery. It is sub three inch resolution. So our um, HD2 camera system collects this vertical imagery at a 2.2 inch GSD, which means every pixel represents um, 2.2 inches. Um, so it's pretty exciting. It's very clear. I mean, you can almost see what's in the back of a bed of a pickup truck. But why I came to this location is that this is the original Hollywood Park in Inglewood. So if you filter through the, uh, the different vintages that we have, which is approximately three per year dating back to 2014, you're going to see change over time. And this um, be eventually becomes the SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, which just opened this, this past fall. I believe it was September 2020. So this is really um, impactful for, um, for inspection, staging, conceptual design, analysis. There's just quite a bit of things that you can do here um, with this um, rich stack of archival imagery. And I, I know I'm flipping through these pretty quickly, but I just, I wanna show you, um, let, me, let me jump to um, October 12th. There we go, it's loading now and then the most recent October. So, so there's some surveys there that are collected um, on two different dates, October 12th and October 13th. Um, another location I quickly wanna jump over to because I thought this was um, interesting is the skate park over in Venice Beach. Um, I was looking through the imagery. Um, let me jump back to earlier this year, January 18th. You can see the skate park is empty. There's no sand in there. When you go to the next vintage, it's filled with sand. And I was assuming there was a storm or something had happened, but I later read that the, I believe beaches and harbors um, fill, or yeah, or perhaps, yeah, beaches and harbors filled this in to prevent skaters from, um, from socializing in the skate park. So I thought that was a pretty interesting location. What else do I have here? Oh, since we are talking about, um, I saw in the chat the, the uh, concrete in the backyard. Um, so this is a location, I believe it's in Torrance. Um, I pulled up an image just from 2017. And so I wanna jump to um, the next vintage 2017. So you can see here where that property has changed over time and they have filled in their backyard, their front yard. It looks like almost every inch beside this front with um, impervious surface, which is gonna create a lot of runoff. Um, but that leads me into my next um, location, which I quickly wanna to touch on since I have a little bit of time left, is our AI layers that we have recently released for, um, for general availability. We have a rich con, uh, stack of AI layers we have added. You can view them within Map Browser. So what you're seeing here are building outlines. Uh, we do uh, detection for swimming pools, solar panels. Uh, the blue areas are impervious surfaces, which are made up of um, sublayers, um, concrete driveways, asphalt, um, and we will continue to add to our rich stack of AI layers, which are not only available for viewing, but they're also available for export through Map Browser as well as offline um, delivery. So um, I know that's um, a lot in 15 minutes, but I'm, I'm glad I got a chance to kind of cover our products. And um, you actually, I would say, you oh, sorry, Nick. Have, this is, hey, no problem, Carrie. You have yeah. five more minutes until questions. Oh. Want okay, so you perfect. got so you got we're gonna we're gonna stop at 250, but it's only 240, so you got 10 minutes, so that's at least five more minutes. Show us whatever you want, and okay, we have some more questions that'll be coming in, and we should be good. Perfect, for some reason, I thought we ended at 245, so I have my own little timer going here, so I was I was kind of rushing. That's there okay, the you end, buy yourself five minutes. I guess if I'm the last one, too, I can take as long as I want, huh? <laughs> You could, except we're going to be doing some wrap up. So <laughs> yeah, no problem. No um, problem. But what what I what I want to say is, um, Nearmac has grown up a lot in the last five years. I remember one of their first presentations to LA County back in 2014 when they had, I believe, one or two ortho captures. And so for me to now be an employee at Nearmac, it's pretty cool to see the uh, maturity and the level of knowledge and the products and just the way we, we go to market. Uh, and we, you know, we've, we take a lot of feedback from the market and we implement that. And so it's allowed our products to get better and better for us to release more and more products. And I, I want to just emphasize, um, you know, agencies are used to getting imagery one way. 
that, you know, there are other ways to do it. And just having those frequent three times per year updates to imagery that's sub three inch um, is, is there's value in that as well. So um, just because we're the new kid on the block, I don't want to um, um, say that we're not, um, we're not at that level where we can actually provide um, services of, of high value. And, um, and so some of the use cases that I just quickly covered, you know, assessment of traffic patterns and, and safety conditions, um, economic development and growth, conceptual design and site layout. Um, there's so many, there's so many possibilities. And um, uh, for instance, these, we're looking at these impervious surfaces. No, and I know that's pretty important in LA County. So that could be used for in-depth analysis on uh, ratio of impervious surface uh, to size of the parcel for any stormwater funding initiatives. And that's um, a little bit of detail, but um, so I will, I will just, um, I wanna wrap up and I, I wanna just say, you know, how, or ask a question, how do we keep up in a changing world with so many unique challenges? And I think I would say the answer to that is through technology uh, with a main focus on GIS, which is bringing us all together today. And um, combine that with accurate up-to-date data that is easy to access. And um, so with NearMap, you can rely on um, us as a data set that's a source of truth. It's clear, it's consistent, it's up-to-date. And um, so I take the time for uh, to thank everyone for joining and I'll pass it back to Nick to see if there's any questions out there. Great, thank you, Carrie. No, that's great. Can you do me a favor? I'm just curious, you you have this on there. Can you turn on one of the GIS layers and just kind of put that overlay? Because I know for us, that's the key, right? The key to the aerial imagery is that it works, it works with all of our GIS data that we have. And since it's GIS day, if you can just turn a couple of those on, I know we might have a latency thing, but... Um, yeah, so um, are you talking about the AI layers or just these general boundaries and road overlay? Whatever, if you have road layers in there, whatever, just to see them on and see how they go. Yeah. Do yeah. you do you put parcels in there for, yeah, yeah, there you go. So we have a basic parcel layer. Uh, you can add basic KML layers. With our map browser interface, we don't allow for any GIS or shape files or anything other than um, KMLs at this time. But what we... Um, our strong suit is integrations with our technology partners. So for agencies that do want to use their own um, data sets, their parcel layers, um, things of that nature, we, we tend to, to lean on Esri and Geocortex um, for that functionality and those GIS viewers. Um, we, we serve a lot of different customers in a lot of different areas. So it's hard to do a one size fits all in our map browser. And sure. so we um, we focus on integrations. Great. Now, I also do want to mention, um, we recently released our oblique integration for ArcGIS. So for um, ArcGIS Online portal and even just um, standalone web app builder apps, we now have a custom widget that will allow you to bring in the immeasurable obliques. Great, perfect, thank you. That's that's neat. I know the folks uh, will like that. Um, let's get to some questions. So there's some good ones that have come in. Um, and we have uh, we have about five or six minutes for our questions. So this is a question from Greg, and he says, for those agencies using NearMap in California with an on-premise copy, how do they get around not releasing it during a public information request, a PRA request? You know, that's a great question. Um, and I would probably have to defer that to our legal team here at NearMap so that I don't get myself in trouble. But... Um, I, I believe it's written in our terms and we do allow our imagery to be um, available to the public through public facing viewers, but we restrict that to six inch resolution and we have some other criteria. Okay, but it's basically licensed imagery because I know for our Lariac yeah. imagery, it's licensed imagery. So for Greg, that's usually how a PRA request doesn't get into play. And again, if we make it available to the public, at least at some resolution, that's the way that uh, municipalities have been able to purchase and le basically lease this information um, without um, a PRA thing in there. Okay, I'm yep, gonna get absolutely. to the, uh, the next one was, what is the update frequency for non-metropolitan locations? So we focus on the heavily populated areas. We do have a coverage checker map on nearmap.com board slash coverage, I believe is the URL. So you could quickly go to that interactive es um, Esri map and you can see uh, what coverage is available there, uh, whether that be just vertical, whether that be obliques in 3D as well. Um, 
But we, like I said, we focus on the populated areas. So if that area is very rural, there's likely that we don't have any coverage there. Now for counties where we don't have full coverage, we do have an option to expand our footprint. Um, and that's kind of on a, a, a case by case basis, um, depending on um, what the area is and, and the contract and everything. So we do have the ability to expand. Great. Okay, this is a question from Wesley, and he says, is near maps oblique imagery from satellites or traditional aircraft? Yeah, good question. So I apologize if I if I missed out on that. I was going a little bit fast at the beginning, but we um we are an aerial imagery provider. So we fly fixed wing aircraft, and then we mount our own proprietary camera systems um, within those um, those airplanes, and then. We're flying at a, a very high uh, airspace level, which allows us to capture a wide area um, pretty quickly. And then our proprietary processing pipeline allows us to turn that imagery around very quickly with QAQC and everything. Okay, great. Uh, this is a question from David. He says, would you mind summarizing the key features and distinct advantages of this product suite over that of competitive products on the market? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, David. So as I mentioned, uh, our, our business model is a little bit different than the traditional um, aerial providers. Uh, we are not driven by any one contract. So we are proactively capturing our existing footprint every single year, multiple times a year, and then we're distributing those costs out amongst um, those various customers that do subscribe to our product. Um, so what makes us different, uh, we're sub three inch. So with our ortho imagery, you're going to get um, 2.2 or 2.8 resolution, depending on what camera system we, we captured with for that flight, you're going to get uh, clear imagery, current, and consistent. So we're flying at the same specs. We deliver that to you in the uh, projections and reference systems that you need. And then we, uh, we deliver it all through the cloud. So you can access it through map browser. You can access it through our uh, Esri marketplace item, our web map services, APIs, and um, for government entities, we do, um, we do have an offline copy that we are able to provide if that's you know, of interest for um, hosting on your own image servers. Um, so I think um, okay. just having a cloud-based subscription model that's current and clear is, is what sets us kind of apart from the others. Sure. Okay. And there's one last question. I think we have time for one more. Do me a favor, uh, Carrie, too. Uh, do you have your contact slide back on there? Maybe we just put I that do. Up. Yeah. Let me switch over. For here. one more minute, you switch that back over. Yeah. And it says um, Do you conduct any before and after imagery captures or comparisons uh, relative to major fires? And, and I would we say fires, but also maybe hurricanes or storms, you know, depending on where you are. Yeah, absolutely. We do have a pulse catastrophe capture program. Uh, we do make that imagery available to, um, through our subscription. I believe it's 60 days um, uh, after publishing it to Map Browser. Um, it's not immediately available to our general subscribers, but we, we are going out and flying some of these um, fires and hurricanes and tornadoes that have happened this past year. And even, even the protests, we are capturing some of those. Okay, great. Thank you. Well, I think um, 